All right, if we can get everybody to sit down, um, we'll go ahead and get started here. I want to thank everybody for coming. It's a great crowd, good turnout. Uh, it's good to see. Um, the board appreciates the input that we've been getting, and uh, I just want to let everybody know that we do take it seriously, and uh, we're going to consider everything that's given to us, and uh, rule as wisely as we can in those matters. Um, I want to, before the meeting starts, I want to let everybody know that we're going to be keeping the meeting open and scheduling another meeting at a later date, allowing for both additional um, review of materials, additional written comments to be submitted, and additional time for people to think about what they might want to say at another public, uh, public hearing. So when that next public hearing is going to be scheduled, we'll send out notice as what's required for this first meeting. It'll be in the papers, it'll be publicized um, as it needs to be legally, and then uh, we'll hold another um, meeting such as this. We ask that when you address, when you make your comment that you address the board, that you don't address the audience, or particular people. Um, the purpose of the comments is to inform us of what people are concerned about and what needs to be looked at. Um, when you come up, please provide your name and your address so that it can be recorded by the stenographer. And we've got it for the record. And we've got about 60 people signed up to speak, so we're going to allow, again, a three-minute time frame for the um, comments to be made by each individual. I know that's kind of tight sometimes, it feels tight, but it's just a matter of fairness and trying to get everybody in to speak in, in, in one session. Our 60 people is quite a few, obviously three times the 60 is 180. We're going to be here for a good hour and a half without any other delays being involved. So with that, we'll go ahead and start with the first speaker, who's Janet Reagan. Janet Reagan. 23 Benson Road, Wasaic, New York. I have deep concerns about the Silo Ridge Resort Community Project and the way it has been fast-tracked by the Planning Board. Already made major alterations to the topography of Delaware and Hill have been made, precursors to the fundamental changes the project will cause to the town of Amenia. The view from Delaware and Hill has been beloved by generations of Amenians is the reason some residents have chosen this as their home and is an iconic landmark for people from all over the county. While it is true that this is private property, disturbing the view is the tragedy of the commons because everyone has been able to share in its beauty and everyone will suffer its loss. My comments tonight are based upon the information in the draft amended and restated findings document made available online. This red line document allows the reader to see the original plan versus the modified plan. This modified plan is a very different one from the original. Although the applicant claims that it complies with the RDO requirements, that is the uh, rural development overlay requirements in the zoning law, it is hard to see how a private, gated community complies with any reasonable definition of resort. Why does Amenia need a gated community anyway? People of all income levels have mingled amicably in Amenia for hundreds of years. People like Lewis Mumford and Thurgood Marshall have found it to be a place of refuge from prying eyes where they have been treated respectfully and accorded the privacy they needed. Franklin Roosevelt was a friend of Burt Miller, whose home now serves as Silo's offices, and he used to come to paint the view from Delavern Hill. In Section 8, the applicant admits that the modified plan does not comply with traditional neighborhood development principles, but asserts that the planning board has determined during the special use permit process that, quote, taken as a whole, the modified project is consistent with the goals of the RDO district, unquote. Traditional neighborhood development principles urge the development of walkable communities where residents are connected to businesses, recreation facilities, and other amenities. This gated community will be quite literally cut off from the rest of Amenia with access to its facilities by invitation only. I urge the planning board to revisit this issue. As chair of the Amenia Wastewater Committee, I also urge the planning board not to grant the waiver the Silo Ridge Resort Community Project request to create a private sewage works transportation corporation to own and operate the wastewater treatment plant. 
which is prohibited by the town subdivision regulations until there is an actual signed agreement document turning this corporation over to the Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority and giving the authority final approval and oversight over its design and construction. Private systems in other parts of the county have failed, causing many, many headaches for their towns. Jerry, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up. For many years now, we have listened to the promises made by the applicant, but have seen little follow through. The original plan called for the construction of a wastewater treatment plant that would be built with extra capacity to accommodate sewage from the hamlet of Amenia. The applicant claimed that the value of this offset, that is payment to the town in lieu of the affordable housing requirement, was $2.3 million. The town's wastewater project stalled yeah. for nearly two years as we kept being assured that the applicant was going to sign a memorandum of understanding with Dutchess County Water and Wastewater Authority and the town very soon. Jen, Finally, I'm going to have to do uh, I, I'm one more, one more sentence. Quickly. Finally, the town's patience wore thin and the wastewater committee looked for other alternatives. In order to continue the current project, the town needs $1.4 million to qualify for a no interest loan of $3 million from New York State EFC. Um, the current plan is a four installment uh, $536,000 payment to uh, accommodate the affordable housing requirement, which is what county planning's recommendation is. But I believe that the planning board is requiring too little of the applicant. I have sat in meetings at which we are... Jenna, at this point, I'm going to have to cut you off. I believe Jenna. that you need to ask right. more from the applicant. Folks, if we're, gonna, if we're going to have a public hearing tonight and people want to a chance to talk, we need to make sure you stay within the three minutes. I don't want to be rude, but um, if people put me in that position, I'm going to have to do what we need to do to keep them moving. I want everybody to get a chance to talk here. And there will be other public hearings where you can talk some more if you want. Next person, Joanne Scassa. And I'll be very brief. My name is Joanne Scasso, and I represent about five businesses in the Millerton, Amenia, Dover area, Wasik. Um, and I'm going to be brief, um, 5800 Route 22, Millerton. When Silo Ridge was a business in, in Amenia before, I had a business in Amenia. So I'm also one of those people that would consider coming back to Amenia. Was there more revenue and something more to bring me back? Um, I represent my husband, Siegel Roofing and Siding, Frank and Amy Duncan, Northwest Maintenance and Lawn Care, um, JJ Stone Properties, um, Country Gardeners. Um, also, we are already doing things at Silo Ridge that are giving us revenue back in the community. And I think it's important because we all have taxes to pay. We all have employees to support. And I think it's a great thing, and thank you. Wayne Uvard. Good evening, Wayne Uvard, Amenia. I grew up on my parents' dairy farm in Amenia Union. I attended grades one through six in this very building. I've been an active Amenia Lion member for over 34 years. I served on the town recreation committee, the zoning board of appeals, the town board, 10 years as councilman, and four years as supervisor. I love our town and I know its history. At the September 4th public hearing, most folks spoke against the Silo Ridge project, or they tried their best to extend the process with more studies and consultants. Unfortunately, as we just heard earlier, it's the same group who've used the same procedure against other projects in town. I remember when John Segala first started, it was the same, same, same people, same objections, he finally won. We had a beautiful golf course, a beautiful country club we've enjoyed. Folks, look around our town. Many of our neighbors, the businesses, 
churches and organizations are hurting. We need jobs. And the added town, county, and school taxes, and also taxes for the fire company to help our wonderful community move forward. Off the fact sheet uh, I just received this evening, tax revenues of over 8.9 million annually. That's 5.6 million to Weebatuck, 1.7 million to Dutchess County, 1.1 million to the town of Amenia, and 240,000 to the Amenia and Lost Lake Fire Districts. These are revenues that we need. Yes, I am concerned about the scenic view and clean water, but I have faith in our planning board, the rules and regulations that are in place, and Silo Ridge and Discovery Land to work in an organized manner to resolve these issues. I have seen Silo Ridge give back to our community. The Lion Club banner is welcoming uh, people to Amenia and honoring our veterans. They've donated to the town recreation, help with construction jobs here in the town hall, and they're helping our library. So please, folks, let's move forward with Silo Ridge. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jeffrey Brothers. Jeffrey Brothers, 198 Simpatch Road, Los Lake, New York, Lot 22. Um, I'm a uh, lifelong resident of Los Lake, and uh, I work for Silo Ridge uh, the last two and a half years. I believe this project will be good for the community. It'll uh, create jobs, uh, create work for businesses. Uh, the businesses that are already in business will make money through sales. And uh, I would like you to consider that. Thank you. Uh, D. Vincent B. B. How do you pronounce that last name? B. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Fontaine, members of the planning board, who are also members of the public, although entrusted with your responsibilities. <clears throat> you have before you deliberations and decisions on what is the most extensive and complex project plan that Amenia has seen, if ever. It has the potential to change the character of our town and also can alienate and alienate some of us rather than unite us as a community and community members. Because of its scope, it can go from wonderful to blunderful and therefore assault some of the social and land use environmental issues forever. It is too easy to get caught up in the technicalities of development and lose sight of the fact that some developments are first and foremost not appropriate for all locations. Discovery land development is the well-funded, well-capitalized force behind the Salvage Ridge Venture. Having developed luxurious recreation and golf projects in desirable sites such as Baja Los Cabos, Mexico, the Big Island of Hawaii, White Face, Montana, but never a development just two hours from a site like New York City, which implies the possibilities of primary and secondary complications regarding the metropolitan aspects that we know and its unique environmental aspects. They have never executed a development in the Northeast United States 
and with its unique and the unique features that it represents. In fact, the concurrent project, the hills in Southampton, Long Island, in the village of Quag, is currently being publicly hammered by the populace for significant environmental risks to the aquifer, the wetlands, beaches, wildlife, and zoning issues, in addition to changes in scope regarding their yet to build golf course and its land allocation and also contentious issues which have developed from the reallocation of land definition. I am not impugning discovery land development, but I'm asking the planning board, what legally binding constraints have you placed, not on Sour Ridge Ventures, but on discovery land developers to execute and complete this project however ill-fitting it might be for Amenia. The last public hearing, we were presented with factoids, positive projections, and really some creative ambiguities, which are, of course, part of the public record. Mr. Chairman and planning board members, please recognize that while discovery land development can be held home, can be held harmless, Without the board demanding a reality-based monetary performance surety bond for this project, its compliance and completeness, the town of Amenia can ultimately be held hostage for the possible environmental degradations, non-compliance issues, and possible even abandonment of the project. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask you to close this. And let it be known that the town consists of those folks sitting before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Bonnie Strain. Good evening, I'm Bonnie Strang, and I live at Poplar Hill Road, classified as Dover Plains, New York, but I fall under the town of Amenia. I welcome this opportunity to be able to address you folks. It certainly feels different as in years gone by, I used to do the recording for the planning and the zoning, and I am well aware of the fact that this process is a long, arduous one. I have faith that you will give it its due diligence. Um, with that, I was off script. So let me just read in less than 100 words. My statement is twofold. The purpose is to endorse Silo Ridge Project. One, as the current president of the United of the Amenia Lions Club, it was the consensus of our members to endorse this project. Historically, the Lions Club has held golf tournaments at this site, of which money raised was turned back to our community by providing scholarships to Weaver Tech students, students or funding projects within the community. The relationship between the Lions Club and Silo Ridge has been positive and supportive in promoting our community-related undertaking. Two, I've been raised in this community. My parents dwelled in this community. We did so by choice. When my husband was in the service, we traveled from here to Hawaii, to Japan, Vietnam. We came back here by choice. This is where we planted our roots. My one and only daughter is here. She is raising her three children, two twins that are seniors at Weebetuck. 
We're very proud of our community. We have chosen to remain in this community. We want to be a part of this community and welcome the project. My personal opinion is, could I possibly benefit from a tax reduction as a senior citizen now? You bet I could. How about existing businesses that could reap rewards along with job opportunities that may be afforded to our local citizens? In closing, Amenia, let's get it right. It's time. I thank you for this opportunity to have expressed endorsement to Silo Ridge. Amenia is known for being pleasing to the eye. In this current economic climate, we should welcome the notion of new neighbors in our area. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure people understand, you don't have to live in Amenia to make comments. Um, that's part of the standard protocol for public hearings. So if you think you can make a comment, you have to sign up to do so. So if you're not from Amenia, feel free to, you know, make comments when you get the opportunity. Bernice uh, Lawrence, I think it is. I have to skip over Linda Kinney, but we'll get back to her next. Hello, my name is Bernice Lawrence, and my comments are personal and come from my heart. Um, the land, Silo Ridge Design, used to belong to my grandfather. It was his dairy farm with James and Bernice Murphy. And I spent a lot of time on that farm, walking through the fields, going down to Scaba Hole, picking berries, picking nuts. I learned to drive cars there with my cousins. We had a great time, but most of my memories are from at my grandparents' house on top of the hill, looking out the, at the picture window, looking at the beautiful view, and watching all the seasons change. And now when I drive down by, I just bring tears to my eyes to see what's going on. I'm just hoping, you know, that, because it's one of the most beautiful views in, in Dutchess County to me, and so it's just a personal thing, and I'm just saddened by it right now. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Kenny. Good evening. I'm Linda Kenny. I live in Sharon, Connecticut. My family, however, has um, been part of the media for over 200 years, and I want to share with you a letter that I've given to the planning board this evening. It's hard to believe that Amenia's planning board would allow the destruction of one of the most scenic parts of Dutchess County. Silo Ridge Country Club is ruining an area that Mr. Segala preserved through careful development. Tears fill my eyes when I drive up Delavern Hill and find that I can no longer enjoy the iconic view. Large berms and pine trees block much of the vista I've loved all my life. It's heartbreaking to think that future generations will not be able to see it too. Is having a larger tax base worth losing the rural character of the town? How many of Amenia's residents can afford a home in, in the proposed community? Please give more consideration to the project so Amenia can, can continue to live up to its name. Thank you. Robert Rinaldi. Hello, I'm Robert Rinaldi. I live in Millerton, New York. Um, I've lived here my whole life. I've gone to Leeds Tech High School. I just graduated this year, 2014. And um, in regards to the Silo Ridge project, I was asked, actually asked by a friend to come look at what they were doing and uh, get a personal opinion of how I felt about it, hopefully leading up to speak here. Um, I, for one, love the project 100%. And I don't mean to offend anyone when I say that this whole scenic argument does not make sense to me. 
because um, it's, a, I'm not going to say it's a bad view, it's a wonderful view, it's amazing, but you really can only see it for about, what, four or five seconds if you're not focused on driving on that road? When I was asked to go to the project, they actually told me they had plans to make a scenic overlook, which includes a restaurant that is open to the public, which I think is beautiful, and amazing for us. That's just on the uh, view. I didn't mean to offend anybody, but that's just my personal opinion. And like I said, I did go to Weaver Tech High School. Um, my experience at Weaver Tech High School, I feel, was limited. The reason I feel this way was now that I go to Dutchess Community College, I'm friends with a huge amount of people that have gone to Arlington, uh, John Jay, and they've been given a lot of opportunities because of the tax revenue that they have received. They have received college credit courses that in high school that I have not been able to receive. I feel it limited myself, and I believe that right now we're overlooking the younger generation and their opinion and how they will benefit from this. It's not fair to dwell over a scenic view when honestly we have to think about the future of everyone else. Unfortunately, that was taken away from me. Thank you, thank you. Unfortunately, that was taken away from me, but maybe for our future generations, that will be available. Thank you. Have one, O'Connell. Just another note, if there are people that aren't comfortable coming up front to talk, we can bring a mic out to people also. We do have a mic in the back, right? Yeah. Okay. Evelyn O'Connell, uh, 75 Midway Avenue, Armenia. Um, I'd just like to share some thoughts about the impact of Silo Ridge on the town of Armenia. We all know and love that magnificent view from Delavern Hill. Well, I feel that that view is not that obscured. When driving down the hill, you look towards Dover and over at the Culver and the Keene Stud Farms, and that is absolutely breathtaking, and it's not impacted by Silo Ridge. Um, these are the views that we need to protect. We must remember that at the bottom of Delavern Hill, it's a town with many needs. Since the closing of the chronic DDSO and the Holland Valley Psychiatric Center, many of our churches, schools, businesses, and fire companies have been negatively impacted. There have been discussions regarding consolidation and closing of some of the churches and schools. Amenia's pre-K and third grade is already being bused to Millerton. The high school has cut some language programs and reduced teacher positions. The job market has been severely limited, causing many residents to move out of the area, especially the younger population. In the future, we may have a need for a fi paid fire company if this exodus continues. The increase in our taxes would be unsustainable. We also have the largest senior population in Dutchess County and many are already experiencing economic hardships. Silo Ridge is a project that offers much hope for the revitalization of our town. They have worked with our planning board and 13 experienced expert consultants for the past 11 years. They have held many informational meetings to inform the public about the project and provided ample opportunity to address questions or concerns. I have attended many of these meetings. They are open and very informative, and if I can find my other page. <laughs> I have to read because I get too nervous. Uh, some of the concerns, such as the water runoff, have been followed closely and are monitored by DEC. And as far as having enough water, this town supported at one time probably 30 dairy farms. Um, a Wasaic hospital with all the residents and all the uh, um, employees, we have plenty of water. The water is not a problem. The best result of this project is, the re is that it remains 80% open space, which I think is wonderful. I mean, what else would you want there? You don't want to see some overdevelopment of that area. Silo Ridge has always shown an interest in our town and is a good neighbor. As a member of the Recreation Commission, I can tell you 
that they have been very generous of their time and support. They have donated supplies and their workforce to refurbish Beekman ballpark fields, cleaned and extended the parking lot, mowing of grass, painting in the dugouts. They have donated many uh, various kitchen items to our town hall. How many more hearings do we need? It seems to me that 11 years and 13 consultants is enough to complete this process. I just have one little footnote. Okay, um, it's one, one sentence. Several years ago, my friends and I went to Warren, Connecticut for a lunch. As we rode into town, there was a huge sign. It says, the town of Warren, Connecticut is for sale for $5 million. Is this the line we're going to go down? Julie Duran. Julie Duran, 92 Cascade Road in Amenia. I'm the office manager at Silo Ridge. I'm also a resident and homeowner here in Amenia. I wanted to let everyone know about the great opportunity that was provided to me by Silo Ridge. For the past 25 years, I've had to commute up to an hour to my jobs. I believe that this project should happen here in Amenia. I stand behind it 100%. The local businesses are having positive impact from this project. I can tell you from my own personal experiences that I use local vendors and local contractors like HG Page and Lakurto Electric and Siegel Roofing. I use Back in the Kitchen and Mac and Rose and Hard Roll and many, many more. I would like to see this project happen. Thank you very much. Jillian Duran. Good evening. My name is Jillian, 92 Cascade Road. Um, I graduated from Lubitsuck High School last year in June, and I'm currently attending Dutchess Community College. I'm also the administrative assistant at Silo Ridge and working with this team and learning everything that they know is a blessing to me. I'm here today to speak about what an amazing opportunity Amenia has in front of them because of Silo Ridge. This project isn't just benefiting the town of Amenia, it's benefiting each and every student at Weavertuck High School, but more importantly, it's giving an amazing opportunity to our upcoming generation. Finding a full-time position in this area is hard to come by. Most graduates from Weavertuck go off to college and rarely come back to live here because work-wise, there's not too much to offer. Um, when I was in Weavertuck, uh, when I was in high school, as, many, as well as many other students, I had trouble finding a job since not many companies wanted to hire high school students. I happened to fall into a job at Salsa Fresca in Millerton, which we all know unfortunate, unfortunately moved locations. Sadler Ridge will be offering 3,100 construction jobs and then 125 full-time and 75 part-time positions. Just the full-time positions alone double the amount of graduating students we have in the upcoming class of 2015 at Weavertuck High School, which gives us numerous local jobs for high schoolers, college students, and graduates. I was seven years old when this project started. That was 11 years ago. It is time we start thinking about our younger generation and see this project as bettering our future. If this project doesn't happen, and with the DDSO closing and Weavertuck Central Schools on the district um, I'm sorry, we've took Central Schools on the brink of shutting down what will be left for my generation. Thank you. I believe it's Gennaro de Simone. Hey, my name is Gennaro de Simone. I'm at uh, 47 Mechanic Street, Romania. 
I just purchased a house here. Uh, my biggest concern was the school district. When I was looking for houses, most of the, the properties I was looking at, all the school districts were relatively good. This is the lowest grade. And, and I don't have any children yet, but me and my wife are working on it. And it, we, you know, we would definitely uh, benefit from better schools and stuff from the revenue of uh, Silo Ridge. So I'm hoping it goes so. Thank you. Okay. Mike Delango. Mike Delango, Town of Amenia. Um, as most of you know, I am the councilman for the Town of Amenia, but I'm here speaking as a resident as a and a business owner. I've owned Delango Automotive for 21 years in the center of town. Um, our town is dying. We, we need help. We need business. Just jobs. These are Dutchess County numbers. 3,100 construction jobs. If each person spent $15 a day in the town of Amenia, that's $46,000 a day. These are real numbers, all right? So even if the numbers are off and it's only half that, that's still $23,000 a day. I know I could benefit from that. All right? And yes, it's a gated community, and yes, they're private homes. Will I ever be able to afford a home there? No, I won't. But my business is gonna thrive. Other businesses are gonna thrive. And when you have a thriving economy, more businesses come. I've heard, you know, throughout discussions, people coming in, well, Amenia doesn't have anything. Amenia doesn't have a car wash. Amenia doesn't have a laundry mat. Believe me, if we build it, they will come. There are investors, there are smart people that want to invest money in smart projects. Um, I hear a lot about, you know, the business plan. The business plan is not good for Silo Ridge. How are they going to sell these houses, 250 houses? Honestly, if they sell 10 houses, it's better than what we have now. And, you know, all this, this stuff, it just, I, I get so, I'm so passionate about it because this is my home. I want to raise my kids here. I want to keep my kids here. I, I love this town. And this is a good project. I feel that the board and the consultants have done their due diligence. We're, we're beating a dead horse on a lot of this stuff. We have state regulations, we have federal regulations, we have town regulations. All these regulations are coming into play. The consultants are working, making recommendations to the board. The, the boards are taking the recommendations in view. I, I mean, what else can we do? Um, the view shed, the, the view is beautiful for 15 seconds. And I agree with you. Um, th this parking area, it's not a thing that's been talked about a lot. Y you know, imagine on that hairpin turn to have 10 pull-off parking spots where you can actually stop and look at the view. That's amazing. And that land is going to be donated to the town of Amenia. So, you know, there's so much positive that's going on, and I do understand about the environmental impacts. I do understand about everybody's concern, but I feel that we're working together to solve these issues and to solve these concerns. And again, I think we are giving it a shot. We, we are looking at everything. Um, Again, it's... How many times can you tell a town councilman you got to close? <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Again, thank you. <laughs> Elliot Soraka. Hi, Elliot, so up around 22. Let's talk about the project for a while. This thing has been evolving for 11 years, and congratulations, you finally put a shovel in the ground. Best of luck to you. It started very diagrammatically. It evolved to, like, in 2009, 
tremendous project. For some reason, it got downsized to a, took it some time this week to look at the drawings, and it's a lovely project. People talk about the view sheds, when the view sheds are gonna be made even better. Coming down the hill, if phase three goes into effect and they build the winery, it'll help the view, and looking up the mountain, it doesn't cap the mountain, but it's gonna be a very dynamic view. It, it's a really positive thing for the community, and, and you guys have to bring it to an end and just have a really good attorney to make sure you cross all your T's and dot your I's so you're ready for it. Okay. Chris Mabel. Chris Mabel, I'm to New York. Um, I'm here pretty much to echo the sentiments of these two young people here. Um, a lot of children, once they graduate from high school, they don't really stick around in this area because there's not anything for them to do. As far as the view and all that stuff, I haven't paid much attention to this project until um, the applicant had approached uh, the school board and come up with some ideas for coming up with a plan to help kids move from academics to real work situations and incorporate that while they're in high school. And I just wanted to thank them for that and hopefully this is something that will work. Dan Johnson. Hi, my name is Dan Johnson, and my home address is 20 Laurel Terrace, Ellenville, New York, which is about 70 miles from here. And you may wonder why I'm here. Well, I'm here because I, uh, I wear a couple hats. First off, uh, family, but then second off, I am a town councilman in my hometown, so I understand some of what's been said, but I will be brief, I promise you. I have uh, that experience. I understand what you're dealing with on these projects. Uh, but I'm very privileged to be an account executive at H.G. Page Lumber, and I spend half my time working out of this office and half out of Poughkeepsie, and I also deal in Ulster County, so I travel all over the place, and I've been doing this exact business since 1977. So I have experience as an owner of a wholesale miller company, as an owner of a lumberyard, as a salesman for Marvin Windows throughout the Northeast, and many other things. And I'm not going to, it's not about my resume, but I have experience dealing with people in this business. And dealing with these people, they are straight shooters, they are right, they do, they make promises, they don't just, um, talk the talk, they walk the walk when it comes to business relationships and promises that they're going to keep. So I am very proud to be here and, and um, speak on behalf of them from that very narrow perspective and from the perspective of Page Lumber, which is a 90-year-old family-owned business in Dutchess County that had the, uh, that had the uh, foresight to buy four Dills yards when they closed, including the one in Amenia. And it, that wasn't an easy decision at the time they did. They invested the money and they hire people, they keep many people working, and I, I, I think that this town is gonna benefit economically from Silo Ridge, and I think they're great people, and I, I thank you very much for your time. Vicki Benjamin. Vicki Benjamin, 3370 Route 343, Amenia. Good evening. Generations of my family have lived here for many years. And I have seen prosperity, and I look now and sadly see many people struggling. The Silo Ridge Project, let me get my spot, <laughs> will create a tax base that we just don't have. And the property is privately owned, and I feel that if they are properly following the rules provided to them, then let this project move forward. Remember previously, we saw a dump in our view. 
from the hill. And I believe that once this project is completed, it will be beautiful and something our community will be proud of. Thank you. Jane Abelard. I am reading into the record for my father, David Schufelt, PO Box 215, Millerton, New York, 12546. On Thursday, September 4th, 2014, as a resident of the Weebatech Central School District and a long-term resident and business owner in the town of Northeast, I attended the public hearing at the Amenia Town Hall for the Silo Ridge Project in Amenia. Many of those who got up and commented were addressing the scenic view from Delavern Hill. I left the meeting impressed with the plan but put forth by Silo Ridge and Discovery Land Company to put together a major program to retain most of the beauty while providing for a major increase in tax base for the community, Dutchess County, and the Weepetuck Central School District. Several years ago, I spent time reviewing the farm exemptions given to members of our local farming community. I have always admired the farm families from the Benekees to the Pulvers to the Perotes and the McEnroes and so on. The impression I got after reviewing the farm exemptions was that the hardworking dairy, fruit, vegetable, and livestock families had mostly disappeared. A different type of farm community has emerged. Owners who don't operate tractors, balers, and manure spreaders are replaced by outside hired hands to do minimum $830 a month production required to get to the total yearly exemption of $10,000, no matter how large the farm. This was not the intent of the farm exemption, and so this has placed a tremendous burden on the communities in the school district. The 1971 exemption law was designed to aid farmers under financial pressure to survive in containing their overhead. At that time, the purchase of tractors and farm supplies were all done locally. Dollars were spent in the community. These farmers, know, these farmers, along with their dairy farms, have disappeared only to be replaced by gentlemen farmers who have their farm supplies trucked in from out of town, out of state, and in some cases the country, i.e. Canada. The 1971 production level of 10,000 per year is no longer reasonable and needs to be increased to take into account the changing economics of the past 40 years. In 1971, a Chevy Ford or Chrysler was 3,000 in gas and fuel oil less than a dollar a gallon. There are more agricultural exemptions in the region today than there were when there were working farms. Need I say more? What adds to this tax burden is that small groups, and I mean often small, come out and declare that they are looking out for the best interest of the town, and so they oppose projects, or let's say they make it more difficult and costly for the projects to succeed. Look at Hannaford's and Millerton being stopped by one person. Dover Knowles has gone off the tax rolls. Who can blame them after 11 years? When things get really tough, the county implements an emergency tax, and who does that help? Where does it stop, and how are communities going to keep up? Getting rid of the unfunded mandates is not going to change the fact that many aren't paying their fair share. The reason Silo Ridge appealed to me at this point was that it combined the hard work, the jobs, and yes, some minor negatives, a little more traffic and a little change in the view, but overall a very positive addition in so many ways. The people at the last meeting want to preserve the view, and yet they're preserving their farmland at the expense of others. If this is going to continue, then we all have to be willing to share the burden. Silo Ridge is bringing not only to the community, but to the Weebatuck School District, to which I pay my school taxes a significant amount of money. In closing, if we are keeping the land open for beauty, there has to be a plan to pay for that. Without tax base, we aren't in a position to protect our waters or our views. They cannot be controlled, nor they can, can they be improved without tax base. Yes, water quality and views are important, but so is food on the table. We need to increase farm production and the tax base in order to fund those programs necessary to preserve what, preserve what the people want. Silo Ridge has done a great job to keep the love that we have for the views in our communities intact. We need to support this project. Thank you, David and Schufelt. Andrew Rubelard. Andrew Rebelard, of Union, New York. I graduated from Weaver Tuck High School and Dutchess Community College, and I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree in business. My family has been here for generations, mainly as business owners. From Schufeld's department store in Millerton in the 1940s to Dutchess Auto Company, Orchard Lodge in Mosaic, real estate, a veterinary practice, public relations company, I've seen them do it all here. I don't believe that this will offer me the same opportunity to, to own a business as the taxes go up, rent goes up, houses go up, cars and food and et cetera go up. 
and the student loans. So many of my friends who are also college graduates can't come back to this area and find decent paying jobs. We need the jobs. We should be able to come back and live in the area that we were raised in and that we love. I support the project, as do many of my friends. Thank you for all the hard work that you have done on the board. I hope that you will look to the needs of all the residents and not to just a few and approve this project. Adam Ollard. Guys are lucky getting three of us in a row like that. Uh, I'm Adam Rebelard. I am the youngest Rebelard in the entire area. So I'm 21. I graduated from Utah in 2011. I recently graduated from Dr. Stack in the spring. I have worked pretty much every odd job in this area that I possibly can. I worked for Rudd Pond for two years, cleaning bathrooms, doing all that fun stuff. I worked in an art gallery. I worked in CBS in Millerton. I recently got my real estate license where I sell with my dad at Dutch Country Realty in Millerton. And I just recently this week started at Salisbury Bank. What am I saying with that is that a lot of kids my age aren't that lucky. They don't find these jobs, they don't find any of it. And it makes it very hard to be 21 and trying to find your way in a world where everything's expensive and you can't make the money to survive in it. And I think Style Ridge is great because it's going to give opportunities to many people my age, from cart boys to high up, to eat, whatever they need, just, you know, someone out there to, you know, break some sand pits, be your caddy, whatever it is. I think it's a great thing, gated community or not. And another thing on the view is, you know, I'm leaving here and I'm literally going up Delaburn Hill. Granted, it's dark out, I'm not going to see it anyway. But I can tell you, when I go up that hill, I see one thing. Yellow signs on the side that say, turn that way. When I come down that hill, I see those same yellow signs, overgrown brush, a decrepit tractor, a bunch of trees, which I think the tractor's gone now, and an old silo that I can tell you right now, the pine trees in front of it are way better than that silo. I think the pine trees are amazing. I, I know a lot of people don't like them, but I think those pine trees are great. I think this is great. I think this whole thing is great. And I just want to say, Robert Rinaldi over here, he said, I, I don't know how to, I mean, I'm just repeating most of what he said. I think it's great. That's all. Chris DiCarlo. Chris DiCarlo. Um, I live at 29 Poplar Lane in Wasaic. Um, I've been an employee for, with Silo Ridge for 11 years now. I'm going on my 12th year. Um, a lot of my sediments are the same uh, that a lot of people um, express. Um, I have two kids that go to school in Weebatuck and I want to see the schools progress, I want to see the town progress. Um, I coach locally, um, the Little League team, on the basketball team. Um, Discovery Land is extremely charitable in the communities they're in and we can do nothing but benefit from them. Um, the town needs the jobs, the town needs the money, um, everybody needs it. Um, the view has been called into question. Um, I love the view as well as anybody else. I've lived in Amenia for the past 12 years, um, but the town needs something. The view is beautiful, but the uh, view doesn't put food on my kids' plates. Um, we just really need this project, and you know we need all the benefits that go along with it. Thank you. Ashley Holtz. Good evening, Ashley Hull, 79 Bog Hollow Road, Wasaic, New York. I have been a resident of Amenia for my whole entire life. Um, in March of this year, I started at Silo Ridge. I graduated from Weba Tuck in 2004, and I went on to get my bachelor's degree at Berkeley College. 
I came back to Amina, New York after college, and I was one of the few that returned to the area because of the lack of opportunities in our town. It is time for change in Amina. Um, it will provide opportunities um, for our community. I support this project 100%. And it is really amazing to be a part of such an amazing project. Um, and it is also, um, it also um, is amazing to work with such a talented team. Thank you. Elise Harney. Elise Harney, um, 11 East Main Street in Salisbury, Connecticut. Uh, I wanted to come tonight. Uh, my husband, John, and I came to the area in the 1960s. We were 23 years at the White Hart Inn in Salisbury. I, I know the benefits of the hospitality industry by way particularly of providing jobs. I can't tell you the number of young people who worked for us, whatever hours they could fit in, the mothers who were able to work for us at whatever hours they can fit in. The hospitality industry is such that it can be flexible. Uh, after we left, retired from the White Hart uh, to Harney and Sons Tea, made the move to Millerton, New York, and. Uh, you know, we're a little apprehensive about coming across the border, but it has been a wonderful move for the tea company. We employ 125 people now at Harney and Sons Tea. Um, the, the other aspect of the tea company is that we have um, been able to establish 1% for the planet which sounds very vast, but out of that, we do support a lot of our local organizations. And I know that's the intention of Silo Ridge as well. Uh, they have a uh, philanthropic foundation, and it is their intention also to involve their people in fundraising for needs for the community. Uh, I, we knew John Segala well, and knew the dream that John had for this property. I think that dream is going to be realized. Uh, my, my other point is I think you're very fortunate to have a uh, local family involved with this. They live here and, um, you know, it's their home as well as everyone else's. They were fortunate to um, be able to partner with Discovery. They're a known entity. They have been successful. Uh, my daughter worked in Hawaii on, uh, on the Big Island. I was able to go to their resort um, and see it in operation. Um, so, you know, again, working with a known entity. I think they will do a quality job. I think they will live up to the commitments they make. I think they will work with you as a zoning board, you know, to do whatever they have to do to make everything work. So my last point would be just for the overlook. I mean, I've enjoyed that view as much as anyone else over the course of the years. Uh, but I do think it will be very nice and it will be safe to have a parking area that will be designated and attractive for people to sit and enjoy the view. Uh, it will be given to the town, but Discovery will be maintaining it. And I understand it is one of their first projects that they will have to do, that they will have to complete. So as, as much as I can see it, I think this could be a dream come true for the town. Donny Cummings. Good evening, Don Cummings, uh, St. Patrick Road, Wasseg. I too was born in this town. 
I played on this stage back in 1960. I never left. <laughs> We're hurting today, people. I, I understand you have to have progress. And this is, this is it. This is the only thing we had. We had Wausau Developmental Center. It used to employ 4,000 people. Today it's on their four. We had Segalas, we had Max and Mills, we had all this stuff, and we had no jobs for these. You hear these young kids today, they want to stay here, they can't. You drive down the road, any road you want to go on, and you, you can't keep track of how many houses are for sale or for closure because people can't afford the taxes here. This project that they're going to do is going to help us. I've been a volunteer fireman for 40 years. We used to be able to buy a fire truck for 25000 Today it's half a million dollars. We have all these mandates. Every 10 years, tires got to be replaced. Scott packs got to be replaced. Fire gear. People, it's very expensive to run volunteer fire companies. So, Amenia, Wasig, it doesn't matter which one. We need this tax base. There's checks and balances. Granted, I hear all about this view. You know what? Your eyes are supposed to be on the road. They're going to they're going to put a pull off so you can stop and see the view and take pictures and get back in your car. Closing, I think you're doing the right thing. There's checks and balances. Do your job. Let's get this thing going. Steve Bernadette. Stephen Benardet, 252 Smithfield Valley Road in Amenia. Now, before I read my prepared remarks, I'd just like to say that I think we're well beyond whether we're for or against the project. I'm neither for it nor against it. What I'm for is compliance with the zoning code of the town of Amenia. I am disturbed by numerous parts of the current application for approval of the Silo Ridge Resort Community Site Plan. There are countless secret and town code procedural anomalies, the violations of the scenic protection overlay district, and the resort development overlay district provisions of the town of Armenia zoning code. If the planning board ignores proper procedure and accommodates the applicant's many requests for waivers and special permits, you will be inviting an Article 78 challenge. The current golf course renovation with waiver, while the resort community application is still under review, has caused a new level of distrust and opposition, opposition in the community, further increasing the possibility of a legal challenge to the planning board's actions. It is questionable whether the current application even meets the three stated purposes of the resort development overlay district to promote tourism, recreation, and open space protection. The project is a private residential development which is closed to tourism. The project provides recreation for its residents, but offers nothing for the community at large. Through numerous waiver and special permit applications, Millbrook Ventures LLC is attempting to circumvent the standards of open space and environmental protection required under the Scenic Protection Overlay and Resort Development Overlay Districts. The basic premise of the RDO, Section 121.18, is in exchange for granting permission for use flexibility and more intensive development than is allowed by the underlying zoning, the town seeks to achieve significant protection of open space resources, especially scenic view sheds, ridge lines, water resources, and ecosystems. The purpose of the SPO, section 121.14.1, is to protect the town's scenic beauty and rural character. Both the RDO and the SPO, under which this project is being considered, have as their purpose the protection of scenic view sheds and ridge lines. Both sections of the code offer standards for objective determination of whether the proposed project will result in a significant impact to the view shed. Although it may be a subjective determination whether the impact is adverse, the planning board is being asked to overlook common sense and community standards in the protection of our most valuable scenic view shed. Delavern Hill and the protection of our ridge lines. Approval of the full application, including waivers and special permits, would violate the principles of our zoning laws and establish a precedent for non-compliance. 
The role of the planning board is to enforce secret regulations and required zoning laws, not to reinterpret our zoning laws to serve the needs of the applicant. Silo Ridge Ventures in its application for the Silo Ridge Resort community is asking for the planning board to overlook or formally waive many of the protections which are at the core of the SPO and RDO. The procedural anomalies and lack of compliance with the RDO and SPO are numerous and have been articulated by others in letters to the planning board and comments at the public hearing. Three of the most egregious violations of procedure and compliance are the estate homes. These homes are not in the original DEIS and have not gone through secret process. The impact of these newly placed buildings has not been fully investigated. All right, Stephen, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap it up. Good. Okay. I'll just read. I will put this into the record in written form, and I'll just read my last paragraph. The planning board is being asked to facilitate the wishes of Millbrook Ventures to push the boundaries of the project beyond what is reasonable under the zoning code and acceptable to many residents of Amenia. Every procedural anomaly, every special permit and waiver granted, and every provision of the plan which does not comply with the zoning code and for which a waiver is not sought is subject to an Article 78 challenge which will only further delay the project and cost the taxpayers of our town unnecessary legal expenses. I urge the planning board to uphold its responsibility to enforce all secret regulations and all required zoning laws and to exercise diligence and restraint in granting waivers and special permits which undermine the purpose of our zoning laws. Thank you. George Langa. George Langa, uh, Stamp town of Stamperville and a resident of 30 years of the area. I've seen this project grow from its inception, and I'm excited to see a project of this magnitude develop in a county that has seen so many businesses leave the area over the years. So many of these businesses, so many, so many people sit on their hands complaining about what we should do to promote economic development. Here is an opportunity to do something about it, a very special opportunity, because the originators of this project are local. They are not only have financial interests in this project, but they have a sense of responsibility to the community to get it right. I would consider this a perfect partnership. I support this project in its entirety, and I feel everyone should embrace this opportunity and make every effort to try and work hand in hand to make this project work. Thank you. Lawrence Levin. I'm uh, Lawrence Levin, uh, 189 Amelia Union Road. Um, uh, like Steve, I, I can't say uh, it's very nice to endorse this uh, project. However, the proof is going to be in the details. And as one woman said a bit earlier, let's get it right. And I think that that's what some of us are asking you to do. Um, it's very nice to say that, to be able to say, you know, we've put all our trust in you. We'd love to do that. Uh, we'd love, but. Uh, Silo Ridge is asking for specific waivers, specific amendments, some special permits that have, are, are contrary to what our zoning laws and, and uh, um, the, the comprehensive plan, um, uh, uh, they go against, against provisions in, in both the zoning laws and the comprehensive plan. So, uh, and it, but just because you, uh, turn down one of these waivers doesn't mean that the project is going away. They're not going away. They're here, they've obviously put a big investment into, uh, into the project. Uh, just because you say you can't put in a road that's at a, at a certain angle because the runoff is, is, uh, is, is too much and is going to um, uh, cause runoffs and, and in, uh, down, down to the stream and then cause flooding in Wasaic and, and uh, 
because there is no, currently there is no stormwater uh, runoff plan, um, requiring that plan from them does not mean that they're going to go away. So what we are asking you is to, to take a, not only to take a hard look, which is what is required by CEQA, to take a hard look at all of these, um, to take a hard look at, our, at the, at the um, request to waiver the scenic protection overlay district. Um, a lot of people here have poo-pooed the scenic view. Um, I think it, it actually is a, a very um, important part of, the, of what Amenia is. It can very well be kept. It, we don't need berms, we don't need tall trees. Uh, we don't necessarily need a parking lot of 37 for 37 cars uh, <coughs> either in our view shed. Uh, so these, all these aspects should be looked at very carefully, should be looked at in, in consultation with the expert consultants that work for the town. Um, I hope that this project is successful. However, uh, I don't know, if, I mean, I'm sure you've looked at their fiscal impact um, analysis. Um, perhaps Mrs. Harney can sell, you know, houses over three and a half million dollars and, and condos over a million and a half dollars. I don't know if anybody who has in the past couple of years here in Armenia. It's just not, it's not the market. But let's say Discovery knows better than all of us and they can do it. That'd be, that would be great for everybody. If it doesn't pan out, and it is, as Mr. Golongo says, there are only 10 houses, that would be great as long as we're not left with a mess as long as we're not left with environmental uh, problems, with runoff problems, stormwater problems, a wastewater plant that hasn't been uh, fully uh, uh, put into the, properly put into the plan. So that's a whole other issue that needs to be looked at. Um, we we'll have to actually wrap it up. So I'm, I'm really just uh, saying, as the woman said earlier, let's get it right. We, I hope that you will uh, take each one of these, these, these requests uh, very seriously and if you are going to uh, allow them at all, there has to be very, very good reasons and, and documented reasons to allow them. Thank you. Ken Hale. Good evening. My name is Kenneth Hale. I live on Route 22 in Amenia, New York. I'm obviously a newcomer here. I've only been here 30, 30 years, but uh, I do have a lot of concerns. Um, but I represent, uh, I sit on a number of uh, volunteer boards, the uh, Weavertuck Country Schoolhouse, the Amenia Chamber of Commerce, the Amenia Lions Club. And as we look around the community, we see things that, you know, that Silo Ridge has really done. In just a short time, they've been back on this plan, helping out in the community, and we really need that. In terms of the view shed, I remember when Silo Ridge started digging it the first time, John Segal and we all said, wow, it's gonna be horrible. They did a marvelous job, a very marvelous job. And I gotta believe that uh, Silo Ridge is gonna do it again this time. So we, we do support you. As uh, Mr. Soroka said, dot your I's, cross your T's, let's get it right, let's get it whole, let's get going. Rich Renia. Good evening, my name is Rich Renia. I'm the principal engineer with Rennie Engineering. I live in Dover Plains. And I wanted to talk to you tonight about stormwater, uh, stormwater permit compliance especially. Um, right now everybody knows that the applicant is out there working on the golf course. We have the unique position that we are out there twice a week. Uh, we are the stormwater inspectors. And um, they're fully in compliance. It's been almost a year now since they started their construction and either m myself or one of my stormwater inspectors is out there twice a week. So we've completed over 85 stormwater inspections on the site now. Um, I deal with a lot of different projects, a lot of different owners and operators from Westchester County, north up through Columbia County, all the way over to Greene County, Town of Hunter. And some of these owners and operators um, impress me, some do not impress me. 
um, and I'm very open and honest about that. This particular owner operator has impressed me in the last year. Everything that we've asked for, they've come through and they've done. If we tell them to reseed an area, they reseed it. If we tell them to stabilize it, they stabilize it. If we tell them that they need uh, additional silt fence, they take care of it. And we're there twice a week, so when we tell them something on a Tuesday, we come back on a Friday, it's always taken care of. So I wanted to speak to that and let the, the board know that because I think it's important for the board to understand a, a track record that they're setting. Uh, one example I do want to give to you is during August, during one of the severe thunderstorms where we had a lot of rain, the um, New York State DEC received a complaint. They thought that there might be something washing out of the Silo Ridge site. So an environmental conservation officer did go to the site, they investigated the site, Everything was in order, all the paperwork, all of our inspections are kept on site, so they're open, it's, everything is open book. The conservation officer came out actually impressed. There were no tickets issued. Had there been any kind of violations, they would have gotten a ticket on the spot. So that tells me, and I want you to know, that they are complying fully and they're, that they're doing their job. Thank you. Andy Durbridge. Good evening. Uh, Andy Durbridge, 37 Clark Hill, Wasaic. Um, just pure coincidence, but um, I'm glad I'm following Rich Rennier because some of my comments would pertain to something that he just addressed. And uh, given his reputation, I'm pleased to hear some of the information that he's given tonight, which is great. Um, I've submitted written comments, and I want to thank uh, everybody, first of all, for their passion and for the comments concerning everything that Silo Rich has done to date and everything they plan to do. Uh, I think it has the potential to be an absolute uh, um, diamond for Amenia. But as many people have said, and has been repeated already, it needs to be done right. That's all. Quite simple. The, we can have everything that everybody's asked for. We can have everything that we expect. And we can have high hopes for them bringing the project in successfully. But I think the important thing here is not necessarily what they've done, which is wonderful, great things. The important thing here is that this is a planning review. So I think just to bring the focus back in a little bit, you guys up here have an enormous responsibility as a significant part of the oversight for the project. You're the key to the whole thing. You can listen to all sorts of pro and cons for the project, but that's not the point. It's not about whether you support the project or not. It's simply about making sure the project fits and complies with everything that it's supposed to comply with. I don't think even Silo Ridge's biggest supporters would deny anybody's expectation to get it done right. It's our environment, it's our, it's our community, it's all the things you've said and everything everybody else has said. It's just a case of you folks, the planning board, getting it right. You crossing the T's and dotting the I's, two people have said, and I just want to reinforce that. And just to mention a couple of specifics, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you extended the comment period because I think it will solicit more and I think the more information for you guys, the better. It's an enormous project. There's a lot of content. You've got a lot to review. And only a couple of things I would ask for. One of the things that uh, Rich Rennie had touched on there was the, the current project on, on the golf course renovations. Yeah, it's questionable as to whether a waiver should ever have been given for that work to go ahead as it was whether a, a more detailed review under Seeker should have been done. I think that bears some scrutiny. And the thing that you guys must understand is that that's an example going on now that sets a tone for passage of further requests. And I, I, I bring that up because I think you need to think very carefully about waivers, the list of waivers that will be applied for, in the light of the one that was already given. And I think when those waivers do affect something that we call the green belt, the intention was to keep it green. And if that's in the zoning, we need to think very carefully about waiving anybody's right to change those things. 
I think we can get there. I think we can have a good project. I think you can bring it home. But I think some of, some of the details, the devil is in the details, what a lot of people say. And something that Rich Rennie had touched on there was the, the current supervision and inspection that goes on on the current golf course renovation work. I could not find any reference to the level of supervision that's going to be required for the project, the rest of the project that's being applied for. So I really emphasize the request to, for one thing in particular, we need professional scrutiny if the project goes ahead and how it's monitored. Um, I, will, I will add more later, but I thank you for your time tonight. Very good, thank you. Dan or Dave Rosenberg? No Rosenberg out there? Mark Hill Road, what to say? Then we have, uh, I think it's Amy Bloomberg. Amy Bloomberg? Uh, I'm sorry, I signed in today. I really, uh, you have to talk I now. No, you have to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> People watching on TV that can't hear without the uh, mic. I actually didn't realize that I was signing in to speak, but um, you know, we've been residents here for a number of years, quite a few years now, and uh, we uh, always uh, value the, the view shed that everybody's talking about. Uh, I think that the question is uh, will there be a scrutiny that is going to ensure that? Uh, the plan is uh, fulfilled the way it is uh, envisioned. And I think that we need to have a certain amount of trust in the, in the people we've uh, put in place to, to make that uh, scrutiny happen. And that uh, the uh, economic benefits are unquestionable. And I think that the question is the balance between the benefits. And if there are deficits, they certainly have been outlined here by some people, uh, those deficits uh, need to be minimized and that uh, it's the most exciting thing that's uh, come along with, for the time that we've been here. And I think that if it, it turns out as planned and as visualized, then it will be a great thing, and I support it. Robert Whalen. We'll pass over him for just a second. Uh, Tanya Shumatov. I'm not speaking as a reporter. I'm speaking as a resident of Wasayak of 27 years and as the former CAC chair for seven years. I also worked for Clearwater and I've worked for HVA for 10 years as the watershed manager for this area. Um, I, I believe this is an environmental review. The seeker, this is what really is supposed to be happening tonight, that we're re reviewing the environmental impacts. And I believe that your responsibilities have to do with helping protect our natural resources for our citizens, clean water, clean air, so on and so forth. Um, one of my concerns, having looked at the stormwater pr pollution prevention plan, is um, that it does not include the new houses that you are being asked to approve. So we don't have the stormwater yet for those new houses because they haven't yet been designed or, and they, have, they don't have any surveys or uh, stormwater plans. So we don't have a complete sort of stormwater plan yet. And in my opinion, the SWIFT is incomplete until we have those other plans. 
Um, the other concern that I have, and that was written in a letter by HGA, but I, it bears reiterating, is that um, this is a perfect spot to implement what's called low impact development green infrastructure. I think some of you know that I've produced a number of uh, seminars for towns, for Dover Plains, for Millerton, we haven't had one here yet in Amenia, to uh, instruct about green infrastructure practices, which are now actually required by the new 2010 stormwater plan. So the uh, notice of intent in the SWIP only said that they were going to implement three out of 30 practices for green infrastructure. And I think that, you know, you as the planning board can actually ask, require that more of those practices be implemented. There's going to be four stormwater basins. That's a good thing. But it's only for 100-year floods. If we have, like as we've had with intense climate change-oriented storms, two eight-inch rainstorms, one after another, those are going to fill up pretty quickly, and the runoff is going to come off those ditches on those 14% steep slopes right down into the valley, into the Cascade stream, causing possible sediment, causing possible pollution of groundwater, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the federal law, which is, you know, the Clean Water Act. It's the state law that we have a protected stream. I ask you to please realize and empower you that you can ask this applicant to implement these green infrastructure practices. They are very important for the village of Wasair. We've had two flooding events in 2007, 2009, and Hurricane Irene when we were actually underwater. So I think it's a really important thing, and I think you guys can ask for it, and I want to encourage you to do that. Thank you. Dana Peek. Nina Peek, uh, Town of Armenia. Uh, I just wanted to, I think um, there has been a lot of kind of for or against um, in favor of good or bad, yes or no. Um, and I think that there is a way for the planning board to come to a really good compromise and make this project um, satisfactory to everybody that's in the room. And I think that, you know, extending the comment period and taking some really good time to to consider the comments that have been offered by the people that live here, those that are, are both for and those are who are seemingly against, even though we're not really against, um, I think it provides you with a real opportunity. And I think some real focus should be made on the, the things that some people have expressed a lot of concern about. Uh, those things are specifically the estate homes, not only the ones that are proposed in phase one, but also the ones that are proposed in phase two. Um, the protection of the view shed. I think that you have a real opportunity to amend this plan, which is really what your responsibility as a planning board member is. It, it, it. When somebody comes in with an application, your first line of review should be, all right, well, so this is the law, and not only our local law, but our state law and our federal law, and how does this project or this proposal not comply with that law? And where that happens, your, your first review should say, you know what, what can you do to change this project so that it fits with our law? And I think that, you know, a pretty intensive review of the documents that are available on the website have shown that perhaps that hasn't happened in this kind of forum. It may have happened between the consultants and the applicants' consultants, but there seems to be sort of a real absence of a real engaged discussion by the board on how you can make this a better project. So um, I don't think it's a matter of go away or say, or I think it's great that it's going to generate jobs. I think it's great that there's so many people in this room that seem to be already employed by Silo Ridge or have been employed by Silo Ridge for a really long time. Who knew that there were so many people that had jobs there? Um, but, and, it, and that's fantastic, and, it, and presumably it will continue, and those numbers will increase significantly over the next five, 10 years. Um, but I think in the short term, the planning board should pay some really due diligence to um, some of the impacts that have been pretty well documented and some of the positive uh, changes that you can make to this plan to make everybody um, happy with uh, what is coming down the pipe. So thanks. Is Robert Whalen back in yet? Or? No? Okay. Cheryl Morris? Good 
Good evening. I'm Cheryl Morse, P.O. Box 645, Amini, New York. Um, when the first incarnation of the Silo Ridge Project came, I acquired a copy of the documentary Resorting to Madness. I acquired that copy for two reasons. Number one, this was the first time a project like this, of this scope, of this dimension, has come to this community. And um, I have to say, number one, I grew up in Darien, Connecticut. We had several um, of these uh, closed communities in that town. They thrive. Um, they weren't quite the same nature of what um, Silo Ridge is going to be as gated communities. Um, they didn't have golf courses and amenities attached to them, but nonetheless, they were gated. And people have a right to do that. Um, I'm a big supporter of private property owners' rights. Anybody who knows me knows that. I'm also an environmentalist, and I've spent more than 40 years of my life um, doing landscape and environmental development. Um, I spent three years almost working down in the Ziff Estate in Pauling. So I'm really familiar with the scope of this kind of project. The reason I got the Resorting to Madness documentary was because it examines the positive sides of good development and the negative sides of bad development as it affects communities like this. I offered it to town officials. They really didn't want to look at it. Much to the credit of Silo Ridge, I provided them with a copy. They looked at it, and I think the current plan that they're submitting, that they've revised things to, um, is much better than what they were originally going to do. It, um, it is being program to a different demographic, which I think is a little bit more in tune with what we do here rather than just seniors. However, um, I was very disappointed that the local officials weren't interested in looking at it. The, and as a matter of fact, I even went so far as to go up to IES, Terry Arboretum, at the time and ask them if they would do a public showing so that citizens had an opportunity to sit in the venue and look at it. And um, my efforts were thwarted. I was labeled as someone who wanted to stop their project, which is not at all the case. But it has to be done right, as other people have said. And um, if it's not done right, it's going to really negatively impact this community, legally, aesthetically, in a lot of ways, economically. Now, part of one of the problems I see here is the fact that our own master plan pushed for the closure of our largest employer. That was foolish. So let's not be foolish in seeing this project go through. And let's do things the right way, please. It's very important. Yes, we need the jobs. I think that Silo Ridge has spent a lot of time and a lot of money but I don't think the process should be circumvented. If you're gonna grant waivers, you better have a good reason because the litigation that could come from this could bankrupt this town. So please do your jobs. I can't stress it more. Thank you. I'll also be offering more written comments um, relating to other issues, but doing it right is the most important. Mark McKeithen. Mark McKeithen, South Road, Millbrook. Um, my reason for coming tonight uh, was mainly because uh, what I read in the Millbrook Independent and a lot of things that were were being said, I really wanted to find out for myself as to whether or not they were handling Silo Ridge the way they, they should be. I started working there for John Segala when I was 14 years old. I worked there all throughout high school, went to college, worked there until I was you know, 23 years old. I spent a good share of my life at Silo Ridge. I love that place. There's no place on it like, there's no place on this planet like that. And uh, 
it was so negative, everything that I read in the Independent, I had to find out for myself. So I, I contacted some people from Silo Ridge, and I was fortunate enough to be taken out on the golf course to see, to see what they're doing out there. These guys are pros. They know what they're doing. A big concern that I had when I read the article was erosion control, which I'm sure that everybody has those concerns. It's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. They have retention ponds built, backup retention ponds built, double silt fence. I don't see how any water can possibly affect anything downstream. They're working on small footprints and finishing those footprints before they move on. It's, these guys really know what they're doing, you know? Not counting the benefits to the tax, the tax roll, which is incredible. And I'm sure everybody realizes how big of an impact that's gonna make on the school district. The amount of jobs it's gonna create. It looked like there was a bunch of ants running around. There were so many men and women out there working Trying to, trying to get this job done. It, it was incredible. I don't see, I believe there was, a, the number was 127 people were on that site that day working. How many other places in Dutchess County have 127 people working on the same site? I can't think of any. Um, I just wanted to show my support. And like I said, these guys really know what they're doing. They're gonna do it right. They wanna do it right. And you guys are here to make sure they do it right. And as, as long as everybody does their job, I don't see what the problem is. You know, I'm, I'm all for it, and I'm sure they're gonna do fantastic. Thank you very much. Mario Kelly. I know, I saw her, she left. Thank, thank you. Joyce Revelard. Trubelard, 89 Cascade Road. I've attended the meeting on Kyle Ridge since 2004, and I have been to plenty of their informational meetings that they have offered to the public over the years. Those meetings were an opportunity to learn about the projects and ask questions. I'm not sure why a small number of people at the last meeting made it seem so difficult to get information. Silo Ridge finishes most every public meeting telling people their door is open to call and stop by if they have questions about the project. I want this project. I have seen Amenia when I had a bustling main street, plenty of jobs and a real community spirit. Since the loss of Carl Valley Site Center and the downsizing of Taconic DDSO, where I worked for more than 30 years, finding a job has been an ongoing problem for many. I want to see my grandchildren, a couple were up able to buy in this community and work here. I want to see my children able to retire here as I have. The increase in the taxes has not made it easy for me, so I can only wonder what it will be like for all of them. I think Silo Ridge and the planning boards over the past 10 years, yes, I said 10 years, have taken a good hard look at the impact of this project. I want Silo Ridge, we need the tax base and we need the jobs. Please don't let the special interests of a few outweigh the needs of the many. Thank you. Catherine Maloney. I'm Catherine Maloney, the President and CEO of the Dutchess County Economic Development Corporation, and I'm here to let you know that the um, organization is very supportive of this significant project in your town. With the development of this facility with recreational, sporting, and outdoor activities, it will help to promote tourism as well to encourage Main Street development in the town of Armenia. 
With the planned $700 million investment, it will result in increased property taxes for the town and for the school district, as well as increased spending locally and regionally. Our an analysis of the anticipated full-time equivalent jobs would have a direct impact of $1.7 million annually, including the more than 3,000 construction jobs, we estimate an aggregate state labor income of over $151 million. We think this is a worthwhile project and we hope that you will support it. Thank you. Michael McCormick. Good evening, uh, Michael McCormick. I live at 18 Beaver Edge in uh, town of Clinton. And uh, I'm here in uh, several ways. Uh, I've been a planning board chair on, uh, in the town of Clinton for about 26 years. So I know what you're going through. We've had to make hard decisions in Clinton on some of the projects, but you have to make the right decisions. I have full faith in this board in terms of making the right decision. I have full faith in their consultants to help them make the right decision. I heard that you had six planning consultants. Well, that's not just belt and suspenders. That's six belts and six pair of suspenders. It's amazing. I've heard that time and time again this evening that to make the right decision. These, these people will make the right decision. I'm also on the EDC with Kathy. I'm a board member. I'm also the chair of the ECA. That's the community outreach arm of the EDC. And I'm here to say this. We need to get behind projects like this all over our county. I've heard people here, the residents talk about jobs. Jobs are just in scarce right now. We need jobs, we need tax base. This provides both jobs and tax base. So when you look at this, this is just not a mean and proper, but it's a regional impact for this county and beyond. It's important that this project move ahead quickly and as soon as possible. As an architect, actually I had a very good friend. His name was John Segala. I was the original architect for the clubhouse on this property. And I remember running around in John's Lincoln, the white Lincoln, on the, on the pathways and the, all around this property. And what he had for vision was amazing. It was just not the clubhouse, the cart barn, or even, or even the golf course itself. He had visions beyond that. These developers will fulfill his visions. And I forget the, the, the wonderful lady from Harney T. She was exactly right. This is John's dream coming true. And I was there with him. I know it for a fact. So when we look at this project, you have to think about the impacts. We know that it already has in hand approval. The approvals are there. So as I've heard very eloquently, we know that's going to come. And I have full faith in this board to do the right decision here and move it forward quickly. But you have to remember one thing in life. And as an architect with my own practice for 20 some odd years, I've worked all over the place. I've worked in every town in this, this county, every city. I've worked regionally, and I'll say this for a fact, that you have windows of opportunity. When those windows shut, they shut for good. So when you have something in hand that's an opportunity, and a great opportunity like this one is, for the town of Amina, for the county of Dutchess, for the region, you have to push it. If you don't push it, it goes away very quickly. And you'll see that if, it, if this doesn't go the right way in terms of getting it done. I've, again, full faith in you guys. You're going to do the right decision here. You have great consultants. And I'll tell you, this is going to be a great thing for Amina and the region. Thank you very much. Gary Schwartz. Uh, I just here to say uh, I have my own business. You know, I worked uh, in this area. I live in Dover Plain. 
And um, we did the same thing, construction and whatnot, but it uh, was a little bit too late for this, you know, so we had to close early. And uh, I went to work for a guy that's working here, American Tree, and uh, seems to be working out. It keeps me busy every day. We do the right job. We keep everything going, you know, so hopefully the project will keep going. You know, we can keep moving forward and, you know, I keep paying my bills and feed my family. You know, so uh, I support Silo Ridge. And hopefully we can move forward a little earlier, but it would have been better, but, you know, better late than never, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Don Rosendale. that when I signed up, I didn't realize that I'd be asked to speak or, or given the opportunity to speak because I don't like to. Because every time I open my mouth, the town either tries to raise my taxes or somebody from Silo, I mean from Tamarack says I'm a psychopath. <laughs> I was at the er meeting early this evening concerning the, what really is a motel that Tamarack wants to build behind Silo Ridge and behind my house. Uh, from what I understand, it's actually being built by Silo Ridge, and that the members of Silo Ridge will have access to it. So all this nonsense about it being a private thing in Tamarack is nonsense. I think if there's been a secret deal made, it should come out and not be passed off as a cabin development for private members of a club that's not a private club. Thank you. Bart Wu. Mr. Chairman, I've already submitted my comments in writing, so I have nothing further to add at this time. Thank you. Very good. Brad Revelard. Um, I'm adding to my comments from the last meeting. Um, there were 750 letters coming in for the rest of Rebel Arts that they sent their submissions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there has been a lot been said this evening. I had a lot more to say and I'm not going to say it. And the reason is, is because this board has done their job. This board has created a venue, has brought in all these people, and we've all had our say. And kudos to this board. I, I just can't thank you enough. That being said, I, 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 I'm grateful that over the last, last 11 years, you've examined this project as closely and intently as you have. And you've used all these consultants, one right here, which I know well, it, it, it is, is any, any town, any state would love to have a consultant like this guy right here. You guys have had the best. This has been looked at over and over and over again, and I thank you. Uh, there's one really important point I want to make here, and that is, and I didn't expect this, is that for myself, having graduated from Lever Tech High School, I uh, lived in Manhattan for a short time, I went to college, I decided to raise my children here and I've had a business in this area for 28 years. I work with several towns. This is the envy of any town to have this project. I, I think we are, 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 again, the word I'm using is blessed even to have the opportunity to have this project. But the point I really want to make is this. Someone much more insightful than I, and than a lot of people I know, once said, we inherit the world from our children. And we heard them speak tonight. And they were brave enough to come out and speak in favor of this project. Thank you. I just want to point out that it's not just one consultant here. There's actually four here right now, and they're all outstanding. So that's what people work with. Um, 
Now, I've got Adam Rebelard. Adam Rebelard already spoke. Is this a, is there, are the Rebelards trying to pull something here? Or? What's that? Now, the last name, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, Amjad? Nishwa. Is that kind of the first part, right? Nishwa. Nishwa. My name is Amjad Nishwa. Dr. Nishwa. I was interested in actually buying one of these homes, and now you scared me. The fact that the whole town can't afford a house there, does that mean I can't live there either? There's nothing wrong with buying something that someone else may not be able to afford. This is a free country. You work hard, you should be able to afford what you work hard for. It seems like it's a negative comment to say, I can't buy a house like my neighbor. We're not living in a communist country. This is a free country. I went to high school in Dutchess County. I went to Dutchess Community College. I moved on. I went to NYU for my graduate, undergraduate work. I was raised by a single mom, working hard, earned me the opportunity to buy a house in such a project. I'm looking forward to it. So should I feel guilty because I can afford a house in that kind of project? I don't. I really don't. Because it's a wonderful opportunity you have in this country. You work hard, you can play hard. Do I play golf well? No, I actually suck at it. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to learning. I go out on the course. On the course. Nobody else thinks I, work, I play well either. So. Really, and there was a lot of comments made by a lot of different people. And all, oh, it's nice to hear. But the one that actually upset me the most is the rest of the Armenian residents can't afford homes there. That's really an unfair statement to me. It's really not a fitting statement to me. I've been in a lot of places in the world. People can afford a lot, and people can't afford anything. The tax base needs to be supported, and it cannot be supported just by a great view. I keep hearing about this. View. Mike McCormick has made some comments, and I agree with him. I actually trust him. And he's one of the people that actually recommended the project to me as buying a home there. I already live in Dutchess County. I've been living here for 42 years. I'm not planning to move out of Dutchess County. I want to relocate in Dutchess County. I thank you for listening to me. And once again, I really don't want to feel guilty that I can afford a house there. All right, with that, that's the end of the people that have signed up for comment. You want to make a comment, Pat? Yeah, I wasn't here in time to sign up. May I? Come right down, sure you can. And Stephen, you want to make a comment also? Yeah. Is there anybody else who wants to make a comment that has not been able to? Yeah. Jack, Greg, all right, um, start a list here. Vicky, you also? Yeah. Pat Nelligan, lifelong resident, born and raised in Wonsake, living in Armenia. Uh, I might have been one of the people at the last meeting and got some of you people to get here. Uh, I didn't speak very positively about this and made some threats to try to get people at least to pay attention. Um, I'm not opposed to this project. I think this project is an improvement on the last proposal. And after seeing and hearing average folk tonight, excluding one family that was a little overdone, but. Um, I, I grew up here, I had every opportunity in the world. I could work anywhere, anytime, box factory, state school. Without that, I never would have made it to college, the Air Force, all of that. And these kids don't have that. And this project might help, or at least I think it will. The problem is that unlike what Tonya said, which I would need to correct for the record, this is not an environmental review and you haven't done the right one. And you're vulnerable 
You heard from people tonight who aren't your average people who just want to have a job and take care of their family. You heard from a couple of people tonight who have money and don't want this to happen. And they're going to come after you about secret. And they're going to come after you about violations of the zoning law. You, other people have said you've done your job. I'm sorry. I think the developer is doing its job. I don't think you have, and without revisiting Seeker, I, I've sued the town three times with Article 78, and I'm just an average guy. You're going to have nothing but delays in the courts, and they're going to go to appeal on it because they've got the money to do it. I couldn't go to appeal, but they're going to do it to you unless you do it right. And if you approve this thing without revisiting Seeker, with an amended environmental impact statement, for the changes made, you're going to lose. I'm sorry. Still right. Thank you for taking my comments. I'm speaking here on behalf of Norm Benson who uh, was unable to attend, and I agreed to read his statement uh, for the record. Uh, Norm Benson is the former manager of Dutchess Soil and Water Conservation District. He was the planner, director of environmental, um, of the environment for the town of Pauling for over 15 years. He is a resident of Amenia for over 85 years, still living in a home built on the old farmstead in 1954. These are his words. And I just want to also say, if I don't get to the bottom line, he said these comments were written based on personal observation and conditions at the Silo Ridge construction site. As, um, so, and he's been following the newspapers as well. So take that into consideration. He says, as a resident, okay. I think it has become appalling to view the activity of the Silo Ridge development from the overlook at the top of Delavern Hill, the most scenic road view of any entry into the Hudson Valley and the wooded ridge above Wasaic. Oh, sorry, here is an alternate route. Okay, sorry, extending off into the Berkshires. Apparently this is being replaced by uncontrolled suburban sprawl without careful enough attention from the town of Amenia Town Board and from the Amenia Planning Board. He says that, first of all, both Amenia boards should take better command of the development process in order to protect the town and its taxpayers. Second point is winter is very near and vegetation does not grow in frozen ground. The entire steep slope area, which is stripped of vegetation, should be fully stabilized immediately by hydro seeding or other method approved by the town's engineer. The town engineering consultant should review and comment on all, all aspects of soil erosion, control plans, stormwater systems, steep slopes construction, as well as all planned roads, driveways, and infrastructure. And I'll just insert a comment here, if you don't mind. I met with the CAC last night, and they were concerned. We have uh, expressed some views. Arlene spoke about the historic and cultural resource of the view, and there was a historic marker there, um, a mile marker, a stone at that curb where we historically pulled off to see the view. We were concerned about turbidity of the water and the soil erosion that came off the stream at the light, late at last uh, rain uh, storm. And yes, the DEC did come out and comment how impressed they were with the erosion control stand, stormwater management. However, there was a pipe that they weren't aware of, that Silo Ridge wasn't aware of. They corrected immediately. So it is good to hear from Rich Rinia and all of these different people and to um, understand that, yes, good measures are being taken, but we also have to take a hard look and do our homework really well because that slope is very, very steep, and even the emergency road access at times are going to be at a 14% increase. We're going to have to give them a waiver for that, and I understand you have uh, the fire department agreed that they're going to be able to service those houses on the ridge, but there's a lot of concerns at the CAC level. We're doing our homework, we're doing what we can, and the ridge and the cultural history of the, of the view shed is very important, and we think that you should take a hard look at it. So back to, sorry, Norm Benson and his comments. His fourth one was, if the town does not have a paid engineer, as we do, uh, they suggest the Dutchess County Soil and Water do a full plan, review, and comment. The town engineer should make a regular site visits during the construction, and we're here 
you know, from Rich Rinia that he, they, they're out there checking it regularly. So, and they okay. should report uh, back. Another town, another town board member I can tell you how to stop. Sorry, was that? Another town board member I can tell you. Can I have one more minute or? Okay. Well, not another minute. No, you got it. All done. Okay. So thank you very much for your consideration. I do appreciate that they have reduced the size and the height waivers, and that they have repainted the building here, and that they've done some improvements to the ridge, uh, to the ball fields and their involvement in the community. But I will say that we have to take hard, hard look at all the environmental factors. Thank you so much. We've got two of you coming down. Just go ahead and get in line here. Steve will be all set. Uh, Jack Gregory, VP Home Road in New York. I've been in business for 30 years. You know, I watched so many businesses come and go. We're losing, you know, the state. We really need this project to go through. You know, well, I went through trying to grow a business here, then try, you know, to get my zoning changed. So please, let's get this through and get this passed, and let's get this town. We need this town. You know, a jump start between Wallace and Amenia to make it grow better. And you start seeing it starting to grow now already. So let's do it. Thank you. I'm Stephen Perotti. I live at 68 Cascade Road, uh, I'm in New York. Um, lifetime, a lifelong resident of Northeastern Duchess. Um, I heard everybody's comment on here, the pros and the cons for Silo Ridge. And um, as you know, when I ran uh, for town council, I was supportive of Silo Ridge and I still am. The one th wonderful thing about zoning codes and comprehensive plans is that they're living documents. One of my biggest uh, criticisms is of the 2007 comprehensive plan and zoning law. Overlay upon overlay upon overlay. And you know what that does? That restricts people's private property rights. Now, I, I firmly believe that it's important for Silo Ridge to cross the T's and dot the I's with this. At the same token, too, as a town board member, I think the town board needs to take a good, hard look at the living document that makes no, hardly any consideration for any light industrial growth, very, very small, very, very small. And I think uh, what you guys are doing is a step in the right direction. Silo Ridge is gonna do something great for this community and for the region as other town uh, residents, uh, from, uh, residents from other towns have stated. But we need to do, do it right, but at the same time too, I think the town board needs to re, uh, need, take another look at the zoning code and make adjustments to that living document to incorporate changes that we need to grow effectively and smartly. And in order to do that, we need to be proactive. We need to protect our, our we need to, granted, we need to protect our, uh, our um, rural character, that's all nice and good, but we also need jobs. Our young people need a place to come back to. That's important to the people in this community. That's important to everyone. And what I think is kind of frightening is this whole mentality from the wealthy elites to use Article 78 as a billy club to stifle growth in this community. I think that's offensive to me. And that is exactly what happened to Jack, a local businessman who's lived here his entire life. That kind of stuff needs to stop. And in order to do that, we need laws that are fair and balanced for everyone, not just for people that have, uh, that have second homes here. I live, I'm a full-time resident here. A lot of people are here. A lot of people count on uh, their, their living paycheck to paycheck. They don't have the luxury to be able to uh, appeal Article 78 after Article 78 on a whim in hopes of something positive happening here. 
So I implore you, you guys do your due diligence. But at the same time, um, I implore people in this community uh, that have the means to, to allow the residents to be able to have jobs. And, and, and be able to have this community grow. Because that's an important thing for everyone here. It's gonna benefit everyone. And, um, okay, I know it's gotta be a coincidence. And that's every, all I every have Every town to board say. member, you've gotta tell them that's enough. All right, we're gonna adjourn the meeting at this point. And like I said, it'll be, um, there'll be a public notice put out down the road when the next meeting will be held. Um, I want to point out one thing. This is the first meeting I've been to. I was chairman of the planning board also about 20 years ago. And um, first time I've seen, I counted seven young people just out of high school, in high school, at a meeting. I haven't seen that ever. Whether, whether you're for or against the project, I don't care. I just, I'm glad to see you here. Really appreciate it. That's it. We adjourn until the uh, public notice is sent out.